September 29th, there it is. It is a full moon, right? Full moon is when the sun and the moon are opposite ends of each other. So let's take this chart and find where it's happening. And it's not too hard to see. This is a full moon in Aries. How about that? For those of you on your mobile devices, right? There it is. The Aries full moon. It's at six degrees exactly. People had questions about that too. There it is. Can't make it up. It's at six degrees. And how do you prove it? You go find the sun. So we'll go across the chart, opposite sign Libra, and look at the degrees and look at the minutes. Six degrees, zero minutes. Well, that is a full moon when the sun and the moon are exactly at opposite ends of each other. Okay. So the sun is in Libra energy at this time, right? And the upcoming eclipse will be in Libra. There are already multiple videos out on the channel. I'll link them below. And likely there will be another video as we get closer to the event itself. So in the meantime, Libra energy, what are all the keywords for Libra, right? That's where the focus is because the sun is there. That's what's highlighted. However, however, the full moon itself across the chart is in Aries. And a full moon talks about what we are going to release because that's just how a full moon works. That's what a full moon represents. It's a release. It's called moon time. So it's about a cycle that is ending, a cycle that is completing. We're finishing up a cycle. The moon is full. And when it's full, it's an ending of a cycle. Okay. Now, what cycle is ending? That's the question. We're talking Aries. So you got to like literally on a pen and paper, write out all the Aries keywords that you can think of. There's so many, many times I say what just pops in my head. So what is Aries? My physical body. It's my appearance. I'm looking in the mirror at myself. And what do I see? Me. That's Aries. Me, me, myself, and I, Aries. The look how do I look? Today I looked in the mirror and I'm like, damn, gee, getting really round, <laughs> right? That's me looking at my appearance and then maybe thinking, well, what can I do to change my appearance? It's not so much the thinking, but if your Aryan energy is elevated, it is thinking. Aryan energy on a raw level, think about this, is about survival, survival of the fittest. Think about what you have to do to make it in the world. But think way back, you know, think way, way, way back when you think to prehistoric man, think back to the survival. I was having a conversation with a friend and we, you know, we were talking about different astrology things, the oldest living humanoids on the planet. Well, what would that look like? Kill or be killed not necessarily to another human, but the larger beasts that were living then, right? And so Aries is all about, I've got to survive and I will have to fight if I want to survive. And so I had to kind of like use weapons, right? You got an opponent that's bigger than you, you got to use a weapon, had to figure out how to stay alive, all right? And so on a really base level, that Aryan energy is, I'm going to fight, and I'm going to do whatever it takes. But then over time, as we progress, we learn how we do not have to use our body or our hands so much, right? We learn to elevate that energy and use our brain, our mind. So Aryan energy on a really high level is going to use its thinking powers. It's going to learn how if it has to fight or if it has to find out how to survive, it starts utilizing its mind because the body is limited. It's temporary, right? We can only rely on the body for so long. We have to start really using the brain, combining really the, the higher heart, the higher mind, and the ability to communicate. And that is not Aries. Aries is all very, you know, on, a, on that raw level, it's just physical. Something happens and it reacts. It's very reactionary. And so we're trying to grow up our Aryan energy. And when we do that, it's more than just about me. It says, 
I have to put away my childish ways. I have to move beyond self. It doesn't mean we're throwing self out. It doesn't mean, hey, I don't matter. No, it doesn't mean that at all. It says I'm considering myself. I'm understanding I'm important and I'm valuable. And I want to better understand how I can move forward and still take care of myself, get, still have the things that I need to live and survive and thrive and be happy and joyful while honoring another. So it goes to the we energy. And the we, W-E, is Libra. And so there you see the balance because the middle is right there. We come together, Aryan energy and our Libra energy. We meet in the middle and we say, you know what? We have to figure out how to make this work. We have to figure out how I still get, out, get what I want and you still get what you want. And there may be compromises. I might not get every single thing I want, but then it comes down to, okay, what's really important to you? Okay. So the full moon in Aries may be about you choosing what is no longer something that you identify with because Aries is big on independence and freedom. It's Aries because it's about my body, right? Body autonomy. Like this is my body. This is what I need. My body, my rights, like but my, my body, my choice. You can't make a decision about my body for me, but it's also that individualistic spirit and the sense of freedom. And so many times, especially if someone's been alone for a long time, they're like, you know what? I lived that life. I had the bachelor pad. I had the, or the bachelorette pad. I, I lived that life and I'm ready to settle down. All right. There might be some folks who are willing to compromise, who are willing to be like, you know what? Maybe the we thing isn't so bad, you know, because, because what happens is when Aryan energy starts to age, remember, you guys have heard me say this a thousand times, it's the fine wine. And what does a fine wine taste like? It's delicious. It's wonderful. It has the layers of flavor, but it doesn't happen overnight. You can put all the sweat and the blood and the tears into working and harvesting the grapes and the work that it takes to turn it into wine. But then it still has another stage, right? The fine wine has to sit and it has to be turned. Those Once it's in those bottles, right, it's got to be turned. There's a lot of care in that. But time, there's no substitute for time. You can't force it, right? The fermentation process, um, you have to honor time. And that's where the Aryan energy, believe it or not, shines because it puts away its childish ways or at least maybe gets it out of its system. It got to go on those adventures. It got to live in the fast lane. It got to be all youthful. It got to just be live on the wild side even. I could probably tell folks some stories that they likely wouldn't believe of <laughs> things that I've you know, just things I've experienced and been involved in, right? There might be some things that wouldn't, you would look at me and think, oh, hell no, right? But I have a lot of Aryan energy in my chart. I'm no young puppy, right? So matter of fact, someone just said the other day, I can't imagine you, you're not like that. You know, and I said, well, if you had just met me even just five years ago, you would have met a very different person, just five years, right? So we have time that really, ages or matures, right? Or ferments. And whenever you've had something that's gone through those processes, they're usually much more palatable and wonderful, and they have greater benefits to them. And so that's Aries. And so when I think of this full moon and the release that we will likely have, I think of how Aries energy can be quite selfish can be quite all about me, 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 wah, wah, wah. And some may say, but gee, maybe we're releasing freedoms. And maybe, but I would like to think that these are things that you no longer feel that are so overly important in your life or whatever. Maybe you were in business for yourself and you're realizing I can only do so much. I got to take on a partner or I'm not going to make it, right? Like things like that, where we come to the conclusion that the cycle of me, me, me has lived out its purpose. And it might be beneficial 
to adapt the we, we, we mentality. Okay. So that's one way of looking at it. Now, what else is near this full moon? We have Selena right there. See that seashell? That's Selena is really similar to Neptune energy, similar to Jupiter energy then, because it's watery, it's mutable, it's dreamy, it's sleep, it's fantasy. It can be spiritual, but think of escape, you know, Pisces, Neptune, Jupiter, even the need to escape, the need to detach and to, you know, when you go to sleep and you rejuvenate, like that's Selena energy as well. But it can also be those rose colored glasses. And it's very close to this full moon. You see that? Very close. So there might be some sort of an aspect. And when I say aspect, I'm saying a perspective. So there might be some sort of a perspective, some sort of a vision, rose colored glasses, that we had with our Selena energy. And the moon being close to it says, guess what? Even if it doesn't happen at this time, on this hour, this moon going forward on the same day, will be conjunct Selena exactly at eight degrees. Selena is a much slower mover, eight, nine degrees. That moon will get there and it'll be like, you know what? Maybe there were, pers maybe you had certain views about yourself, about your own image, about the way that you see your own freedoms. And maybe you're realizing something is not what it once was. You're seeing it differently because the moon can take those glasses off because it's the end of a cycle. Okay. Now, what does that have to do with Libra energy? A lot because the opposite of Aries is Libra. And so when we go away from the me, me, me and self, 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 we then gravitate more towards compromise and we, we, we. We're all of a sudden over here thinking, well, you know, maybe I should think about the long term security. And if I want to go into business with somebody, that might be smart, right? And I say this because that's Libra and energy. It's partnerships. Some of you may be thinking about marriage and it's possible some of you may have been waiting for somebody else to, oh, I don't know, pop the question. And so maybe at this time, there's strong strategizing happening. And I would say this is absolutely spot on. We're really thinking because look, look who's next to the sun here. You see that triangle, or I'm sorry, that diamond head, that little being with the diamond head? This is Pallas Athena at seven degrees. So the sun is conjunct Pallas. The next day, the sun will be right on top of Pallas. So it represents a new beginning because it's the sun and Pallas together. Now, when the sun is close to a planet, it is combust. It takes away the power of that planet. When the sun and a planet are exact, it takes on a whole different meaning. It's not combust anymore. They're conjunct, exact conjunction. It's the power to create something. And if it's with Pallas Athena, there may be new business partnerships. There may be new romantic partnerships, but they are a little bit, they're not so much about you know, desire and lust and, and, and fantasy and, and just, you know, they're more about literally compromise and diplomacy and how can we move forward together as a partnership? There's more of the we factor involved here, but there's a strategist. She is a strategist. She thinks long-term. She can look at a map and she can plot and she can figure out a way forward. She sees the next correct steps by looking forward by looking at those steps down the road and they're logical and they're based on partnerships. They're based on things being equal and fair. On top of that, Mercury is smart. She's also strategic. She's in Virgo at this time. And we have Venus conjunct Juno. And this conjunction is squaring Uranus exactly in Taurus. This is an exact square. So this speaks strongly to possibly an ending of partnerships, but then a new beginning of partnerships. There's multiple lineups, multiple planetary communications that are going on in this chart 
where yes, there may be an ending, but look, there's also a beginning because partnerships are again here with Venus and Juno at 22. The eclipse that's coming does speak of an ending because it is a solar eclipse, but it's a solar, which is a new beginning, but it's a south node eclipse, which represents a release and an ending. That's the south node. So on this day for this particular full moon, the node is there in Libra at 2454. And on the day of the eclipse, that node is at 24 degrees. In that way, the node hasn't moved that much. Still a release in partnerships. Remember, this is, can be the law. This is justice, right? This is fair, equality, lawyer energy. That's still happening. And that's still going to continue to happen. But at this time, what is more powerful is that Mars and the South Node are getting very close together here. And so when we come upon the very last day and the very beginning days of October, these will be in an exact conjunction. And when the eclipse comes, Mars will not be near the south node at all. You understand? When the eclipse comes, Mars will have passed the south node already. So there are differences, but yet you could say there are some similarities Most say there is no such thing as a bad Venus square. Matter of fact, a lot of people say there's no such thing as bad squares. Squares typically come with the stress and the tension, but it's to force some sort of an action. Something has to happen. We get irritated. We get agitated. We have to make a change or we're getting roadblocks. We have to figure out workarounds, right? We have to figure out other solutions, other ways. And this is interesting energy because... It's Venus and Juno in partnerships squaring Uranus. Uranus is authority figures, maybe authoritarians, people who are in charge. This is technology. This is science. Remember banking and money because it's Taurus energy and Venus rules Taurus. But Venus is also in Leo at this time. And guess what? Venus rules Libra. So for this time, Venus is a very big deal. But let's not forget this full moon, the ruler of this full moon in Aries. That's what this video is about. The ruler of this full moon in Aries is Mars. Mars rules this full moon. Make no mistake about that. And what is Mars? The body the appearance, the action of my body. This can be the military. This can be police because it's somebody who can carry a weapon legally or illegally. So likely, possibly new laws or some sort of legislation being passed, which may help with, it's not about getting rid of guns, folks. It's about, can we have some, some, some sort of certification or so what do they say guardrails something built so that we can keep our youngsters safe so that could be a thing there what i will add here is is the strong opposition between persephone and chiron chiron and aries at 18 the wounds of my body this makes me think of the mars stuff and the wounds and the guns and the weapons right chiron and 18 we think of people who are likely darker colored skin and we think of uh persephone here and the compromise and persephone well she feels out of place persephone was literally taken from her home and so she's not real comfortable but the the goal and the power of persephone how she takes back her power is by making wherever she is her home in whatever way that means for her, learning how to compromise, but learning how to incorporate the important things of the Aryan energy that she learned about herself right where she is, right? Learning to compromise, but never sacrificing 100% who you are in your identity because that's just, that's not fair to ask someone to, to ignore who they are or to cover up who they are. Um, but Persephone opposing Chiron, that might be a thing there. There might be something there where we're looking at the wounds of the bodies, right? And because Mars is a big deal here because Mars is the ruler 
of this full moon can be a, a hot topic or something that should be looked at yet again or talked at yet again. And some sort of a cycle, hopefully, ending the senseless slaughter of individuals based on who they're related to, the way they identify, their sexual orientation, gender, color of their skin, right? Like that shit's got to end. So if there's any releasing and letting go, hopefully it's some of this fight stuff, some of this war-like mentality. Hopefully it's time for that to take a back seat or if nothing else, to at least put a leash on it and just say, hey, but there's rules. And remember, Mars is a tool and there's a time and a place for everything. And it's, you know, um, it might be time to put away our, our childish ways. You got any questions? Comment below. I hope this video has helped you out to maybe understand some things in your chart. Remember, look at the degree of the moon to find the location of it in your chart. It's at six degrees in Aries. Below the video, I'll have all the degrees for those of you who like to pay attention to the degrees in your chart. Again, if you don't know and you want to know, just comment below.